you know, we each have those moments in our lives where it's time to step up. Time to step up. Time to step up, you know? Well, the moment you heard, I mean, I really have been saying to people, it felt like a veil dropped and you sort of stepped through that veil. Did, did that actually, did you feel like that? I felt a sense of responsibility, mm -hmm. to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. um, and with that comes a sense of purpose. Do not be afraid to vote. Because I think there is also something quite insidious about these attacks um, on the electorate in these various forms that are intended to convince people that their vote won't matter. Your vote does matter, and we cannot let anyone ever take our power from us. The American dream is, for this generation and so many recently, far more elusive than it's been. And we need to deal with that. Part of my plan is for first-time homeowners, buyers, to have a $25,000 down payment assistance to buy your first home. Because people just need to be able to get their foot in the door, and then you'll do the hard work. Part of my plan is what we need to do to support small businesses. Ms. Shadette, what do you want us to know about Amber's story? Initially, I did not want the public to know my pain. I wanted to go through in silence. But I realized that it was selfish. I want y'all to know Amber was not a statistic. Mm. She was loved by a family, a strong family. And we would have done whatever to get my baby, our baby, the help that she needed. When ProPublica came to my home, I pushed them away. No. No, no, but Kavithia, she kept, she was persistent. She said, it was something that you needed to know. You have to hear me. Women around the world, people around the world need to know that this was preventable. Two years later, after speaking with my daughters, because I lost strength, I lost hope. You're looking at a mother that is broken. Mm -hmm. The worst pain ever that a mother, that a parent could ever feel. Mm -hmm. Her father and myself and the family, you're looking at it. Well, we appreciate so deeply you being here. And I, we're all watching you hear that tape and those words. We know how re-traumatizing that is and the strength it takes for you to be here to tell your story. And we deeply appreciate it. And I have to ask you, uh, as her sisters, how are you coping? And what does knowing that this could have been prevented um, how, does, how does that sit with you? How do you cope with that on a daily basis? I mean, it's heartbreaking. You know, that was my baby sister. I love my baby sister, you know. Um, I'm beyond hurt, um, disappointed. I feel guilty. I wish I could have helped her, you know, because she was suffering. Mm -hmm. And we had no idea. We trusted them to take care of her, you know. Mm -hmm. And they just let her die because, because of some stupid abortion ban. They treated her like she was just another number. Mm -hmm. They didn't care for her as if, you know, she was their daughter or their, you know, granddaughter. Yeah. You know, and she's not here. She'll never come back. Yeah. Andrika, what do you want to say? I want to say that it's, it's very disheartening that my sister was allowed to suffer for 20 hours. She suffered. It was nothing that we could do to help her. We trusted the healthcare professionals to do their job and save her, but they failed her. 